Okay, so strike the data flow task from your ways of having this done. And let me show you another tool. You remember our trusty old execute SQL task, our best friend. Okay? So you're going to take your execute SQL task. You're going to connect up OLADB. Make your connection, same one I did before, just to your database. And you can take your direct input here. And you can just copy and paste your query that ran to give you your XML. So just copy and paste the whole query and let it be right there. Now come back to your result set and look what we have here. I want to return XML. You see that's what this XML dropdown is for. When you return XML from your query, from the execution of a stored procedure or the execution of a query, this is what you do. You say XML. And I say OK. And if I actually do run it now, I'm going to get an error message. And the, the error message, there's this, you know, really super technical error. But the bottom line of the error message is I have said that I'm returning XML, but I haven't decided where to store the XML. Okay. So let's go back over here. So I said that I'm returning XML because I said my result set was XML. But in the result set tab, I didn't define where that result set would be stored. OK, so I say add. The first result set that comes back is 0 in an OLADB connection. And it is the only one we can work with here. And so notice it's got to go to a variable. Yeah, it's not so simple as just saying write to a file. It's going to go to a variable. So let's just dump it out to a variable. So I'm going to call this my XML data. Make it a string. Now remember I said that the XML from SQL Server was returning a string. So let's say OK. And, you know, just for fun, you can go ahead and run it. Make sure you get green. And then I'm going to do what we often do to test it out. Let's just drag a script task. Let's use uh, VB this time. And let's bring our variable in. And let's just have it display for us what that is. So message box dot show DTS dot variables. And did you know that you could just say uh, ordinal position. So notice right here, I did not actually put in the name of my variable. There's only a single variable in the collection. It is at position zero, and so that's the one that I want to use. Now, this is actually a faster implementation, so like this would perform better, but it's way difficult in terms of code maintenance. Because now I have to put in a comment that says, hey, don't you know that number zero is equal to my XML data? And then if somebody rearranges the parameters or something happens, it breaks my code. So not necessarily a great practice, but I thought I'd show it to you in case you run across that in your code. So all it's doing is going to do a, just a real quick pop-up to show us the XML data. Pretty cool. Now wait a minute. Do you see something that wasn't there before? I do. I see this root. And you see right there, it has added, when you told the execute SQL task that you were returning XML, it has added a root for you already. So you might want to modify your query to take your own root out. Oh, you might not. I don't know. That's up to you. We can change this. Notice that really there's root number one and root number two that's closed here and closed here. We can get rid of departments here if we wanted to just by changing our query. Our execute SQL query, if you remember, we defined the name of the root. So right here, we said we wanted to have it create a root element named departments. So all you have to do is either comment that out or just remove it all together. So I just put my little two dashes to comment it out right there. 
and when I run it this time you'll see there's really only a single root we lost the department so it starts here and it ends here I don't know I'm just showing you different things that you can play with in here that's all I'm really doing uh, it doesn't matter you probably have your own way of needing to do things now let's write it to a text file okay so this is actually not very difficult we're gonna stay within our script task and it's just three little lines of code here uh, let's see I'm in VB so we'll use VB I'm gonna take out my message box here or at least comment it out and I you know there's a bunch of different ways to do this um, I'm going to do this with the stream writer uh, so stream writer oops, is a class that allows me just to write an IO stream to the file system so I'm just gonna write it as C my XML data dot XML and so I've created a new file in that line now in that file I want to have it write the content of our friendly little variable okay. variable zero and I need to flush my stream writer uh, that way it will actually flush that to disk this will actually write it into memory and then flushing it writes it from memory to disk uh, and then I can dispose here uh, and if I do not dispose the garbage collector will do that for me as sort of a protection uh, thing but that's it I mean it's really simple this could actually also be a variable I could make this a little more dynamic instead of hard coding it so I say okay I would actually in the real world I would put this inside of a container so let's just put it in a sequence container let me get both of you guys in here um, and so I would say write XML file and that would be my container and so we've now exported from SQL Server to XML there's my XML data and sure enough it did exactly what we asked it to do so it's it's not difficult to export from SQL Server to an actual physical XML file it's just that you have to work at it a little bit you have to actually go write the C sharp or write the visual basic code to do this uh, it's not not that it's hard it's just that you have to know how to do it